Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, it's been a little a little while. Sorry about that. My family is in the midst of a move back from Iceland to North America, and I was like super optimistic that we could do all these things, like live stream and everything. But uh, you know, that becomes a little complicated with um all the logistics of moving. So um yeah, but we're almost back home in Canada and then we're hoping to be able to resume more normal scheduling. Mike's also dealing with kids that just finished school and getting them into summer routines. So um, we'll try to, as as we're able, record more regularly, but Mike's done a whole bunch of, bunch of gameplay, so should be um, doable for us. Yeah, um, so we had some feedback about doing um, some of the commentary separate from the gameplay. And I think that's what we're going to try out this time um, and see how it goes. Um, and just let us know if you like that better, if there's anything else that um, we could adjust. I think you're right that I, you know, we shouldn't miss some of the important dialogue and I'm a talker. So <laughs> um, yeah. Anything from you, Mike? Uh, no. Yeah. Just the, um, in terms of where we're at, we're just at the base of the mountain. Uh, we're going to be making our trek up there uh, in this episode, um, running into some people again and uh, uh, kind of exploring some different areas. So the trek up the mountain so, is what we're doing. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, without further ado, uh, we'll just get into it. Let's get back in. Those red pots are filled with some sort of explosive, I guess. Let's see. What have we here? Coffin? Arcane shoulder wraps. Different gear that you can equip uh, provides different um, Got it. perks and benefits and things like that. These towers spew out some sort of poison. You can freeze say, them uh, by yeah. throwing your axe. Okay, see the axe can also it can be equipped with like different. So it has like a frost power to it already. Mm -hmm. um, there's different runic attacks that you can do. So there's special attacks and things. Got um, it. I do love the boomerang quality of the, of the axe. Okay, I remember this, I think, from when I did one of the, rea the reactions for um, Gameology. Yeah, it says something that's kind of hard to understand, and they don't provide subtitles for the yeah, okay. ogre. So are we still toward the base of the mountain? Or are we kind of yep. like... Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely at the base. You just have to be careful not to touch them, right? Yeah, so you can see I'm already at pretty low health here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to Spartan Rage mode. Nice. Pound on the ogre for a little bit. <laughs> you can ride him around for a little bit here, but I killed him too fast. Unfortunately, otherwise you could ride him into some of the enemies. Is that something you can only do towards the end when he's like vulnerable? Yeah, it's like the death blow or something they yeah. call it. Yeah. Andreas is holding his own. Mm-hmm. You have to pick up arrows or does he like have a never ending symbol? Yeah, they just regenerate uh, automatically. Yeah. Which is nice. It is really nice. There are different upgrades you can do, uh, give him as well. Um, you get experience and things like that that you can use to upgrade different uh, attacks and, and, and get grant new abilities. But he's an NPC. Like, you're not playing him. Mm -hmm. He's doing his thing. Yeah. Like, yep. So he's got his own like, AI, but you can command him to um, shoot his arrows and things like that at specific times, which can interrupt... Uh, Okay. Um, attacks and and usually there's like a little glowing circle. Uh, hey, I can see why mom wanted us to bring her here. Indeed. Does the mountain have a name? I don't know. That's a good question. It, it hasn't been named yet, uh, as far yeah. as I know. Um, I wonder if Sindri knows the sky movers tangled with roots up here. So if you remember in the last episode, we met with Sindri, the uh, the mm -hmm. dwarf. He's got care. this gondola um, that's currently stuck, and this is the the top part of the gondola okay so here's the passage uh, as you go boy. further the mountain what is that? it's currently blocked you must find another way up the witch wish she was here 
Bet she could get us past this. My magic is useless against the Black Breath, and there's no way around it. Odin saw to that long ago. What are you doing here? Making sure you can finish your journey. Why wait to warn us? I was busy saving my friend, if you remember. The Black Breath is a corruption of magic even I can't dispel. Only the pure light of Alfheim is strong enough to break through. But that road is long. What does this goal mean to you? It's everything. Follow me. Why help us? Maybe I see more of myself in you than I'm willing to admit. Maybe. Maybe by helping you, I'll make up for a lifetime of mistakes. Or maybe I just like you. Even though we shot your friend? Even though you shot my friend, yes. Where must we go? To a realm beyond your own. Okay, so we can't be in the mountain anymore. Are you coming with us? Only for yeah, the, the passage is blocked by that black breath. Okay. Um, so we got to go acquire the light of Alfheim to dispel it. Okay. She's leading us there. Mm-hmm. We'll use this. Greythal. Can't. Sindri said it was broken. Sindri? The dwarf at the foot of these hills. He was fixing it when we got here. Well, no one was there when I passed by. Perhaps he finished. Dwarves are awfully resourceful. And irritating, based on the two we have met. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Just give that a turn. There. Tyr's temple is at the center of the lake. Hmm. It is from there we travel to Alfheim. Thankfully, it's no longer underwater. Why is that creature in the bay? No one knows. He just appeared one day. Soon after, Thor attacked, and their battle could be felt across all the realms. Talking about Jormungandr, obviously. Oh, okay, yeah. And Thor returned to Odin empty-handed. The serpent stayed and grew so large, he now spans all of Midgard. See? Told you. They've hated each other ever since. Destined to kill each other come Ragnarok. <laughs> you believe in Ragnarok? I dearly wish I didn't, child. We gotta come back to that. You know, we actually talked to the world serpent. You did? An exaggeration. <laughs> I'm good with languages, even ones I've never heard before. But when he talks, I can't understand any of it. Sadly, no one can. He speaks a dead tongue. Oh. Must be lonely. Watch your step. Just along here. Are you sure? We came through here before and there's no way back to God. See? Is that so? Let me show you something. Are you watching? Riosa. What? It's solid. Elven architecture. My bowstring was soaked in the light of Alfheim. It can now reawaken the magic of the elves. Wait. It won't just disappear, will it? Not as long as the light shines free. This way. I want one. Hmm. Those roots. What kind of magic is that? It's Vanir. From Vanaheim? You know of it? Just stories. Mother didn't say much about the Vanir gods. Hmm. Just that they're always at war with the Aesir. As compared to Odin and Thor, they're the good guys. There are no good gods, boy. Thought I taught you that. I didn't stop to look at that, but it almost looked like Odin on the um, doorway. Okay. Hmm. Gotta get back to the Vanir stuff, too. 
Tyr's temple. Built with help from the giants, Great Tyr used it to travel the nine realms and keep the peace between them. Okay. It doesn't seem very peaceful. Everywhere we go, we're attacked. Especially by dead things. The risen dead grow ever more numerous. Once the roads and trails would have been full of people. Now all have hid or fled, save for the Reavers, savage enough to survive in such a world. Reaver. Hmm. I love his commentary in these mm -hmm. notes. Yeah, I agree. It's I like that it's from um, Atreus's point yeah. of view. Yeah, me too. Hell Reaver. This is this tears. Take a ride at the bottom of these stairs. Mm -hmm. Another one of those light curses. Wait there while I reawaken the light. Leosta. <laughs> that did it. What are we doing exactly? Mending the disrepair. Start by lifting that axle. Good. Now push it back into place. Now realign the wheel onto the track. No problem. Perfect. Now push the bridge along the track. Freya's just hanging out. <laughs> what? The whole entire bridge is turning. How is the whole entire bridge turning? Boy, you're really strong. Yeah. Just keep pushing until the bridge reaches its first position. Yeah, so it's funny because he still obviously doesn't know that Kratos is a god. Yeah. Really strong. Lobo, he's just like kid like, just kicking his legs as he's sitting on the mm -hmm. ledge there. Looking around. Enjoying the ride. <laughs> You're really strong. <laughs> You're not done yet. You have to push the bridge all the way to Keep the going. end. Keep going. So about the dead. We heard someone call them hellwalkers. But what are they? They are poor, restless souls, denied their judgment and their peace. Why what? Could Vanir magic raise the dead? It could, once. But this is no spell. This plague of dead is but a symptom of a world out of balance. Something or someone has meddled with powerful forces. That is all I know for sure. Getting tired. Almost there. Almost there. <laughs> oh. I think she said you have to push the bridge all the way to the end for something to get reset. <laughs> That's helpful in train. I was having trouble with this little mini game thing. Chris, look, I think you have to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't hurt your back, did you? I did not hurt my back. <laughs> He's still Kurt. I did not. Through these doors. Wait, so did the giants or the elves build tier stuff? All the races helped with its construction. It was the last great act of cooperation between the realms before peace disappeared for good. Leosa. Your bowstring stopped glowing. Its power is now depleted. Only a few knocks of magic remained in the bowstring, and we used them. Your bow, please. Once you claim the light of all time, infuse the bowstring with its power. Don't forget.
talk like you're not coming with us. I'll try, but measures were taken to keep me trapped in Midgard. What? The gods don't care for me much. Is this it? It's so dark. This temple has been asleep, underwater for almost 150 winters. It needs only the light of the Bifrost to reawaken. Realm Travel Room. This is all in Tears Temple. Mm hmm. Those roots yep. don't look like your magic. So it's built with the help of all the different races. The great world mm. tree and make travel between the realms possible. We could talk about tier later too. Yeah, it's just referenced here. Work. You will need this, a bifrost, to create travel between realms. It can capture, hold, and transfer the light of Alfheim. Place the bifrost there. Gently. <laughs> Break it. Give it a moment. The temple needs time to wake up from its long slumber. It is from this room, and this room alone, that you will be able to cross between realms. What you see before you represents the temple in which we stand, as well as the realm towers that encircle the Lake of Nine outside. All the realms exist in the same physical space, reflections of each other. These doors, the towers outside, and the nine realms are all intertwined and coexisting on the branches of the World Tree, separated only by the Bifrost Light of Alfheim. This place can focus and control that light. And is this the World Tree? Only an artistic representation of it. No, the Yggdrasil is much, much more than this. The Tree of Life is bound to the fate of the world, just as we are bound to it. The tree nourishes our soils. The dew from its leaves feeds our valleys and rivers. The tree's very existence supports all of creation along its boughs. Its life energy interwoven into the tapestry of life. Birth, growth, death, and rebirth. Every strand transcending time, transcending space. Everything comes back to the tree. So, that's how it works. But I'm guessing you were looking for a more practical answer. Yes. <laughs> Very well. The bridge you pushed outside is currently positioned to lead to the realm of Vanaheim. Instead, turn the wheel to our actual destination, Alfheim. Wait, is this moving the big bridge outside? Yes. The wheel turns the bridge, and the bridge aligns to the different realm towers on the lake outside. Oh. There's no tower on this. And that's why realm travel to Jotunheim is impossible. Without a tower for the bridge to lock into, the sequence can't begin. Every realm has a travel room that unlocks the bridge to that realm. I'm giving you the one for Alfheim. Now you can lock in your destination. We're ready. Remember to take the Bifrost. You don't want to lose that. Now the realm travel bridge will align, and the realm between realms will open. So Bifrost is like a key of some kind in that? See that giant crystal? Yeah. Each realm I guess it uses the uh, magic from Alfheim amplifies the power of the Bifrost to, that, uh, this. to connect you. Yeah, to the different realms. Realm travel is only possible from this room. What about that one realm tower missing from the lake? The Jotunheim Tower disappeared from all realms over a hundred winters ago, when the giants vanished from Midgard. Where the tower went and how they moved it remain a mystery. It didn't work. We're still here. Follow me. The Bifrost is dark. This trip was its last use. There's no going back until it's replenished with the light of Alfheim. So we are trapped. Someone of your ability should have little trouble getting back to Midgard. And we'll be able to make that black bread go away? With the captured light of Alfheim, yes. So here we are in Alfheim. All right. Yes, we got to find the, the light of Alfheim and recharge awesome. the Bifrost.
and then we can start traveling um, back and forth between different realms uh, using yeah. its power. Yeah. Well, here we are. One thing I was curious about when I was going through this is when Atreus asked Freya if she believed in Ragnarok. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I thought that was kind of interesting because, you know, I guess I was kind of under the impression that it was just an inevitable fate and you know, it wasn't mm -hmm. something that you necessarily believed in or, or didn't believe in. Yeah, absolutely. And Freya um, is, you know, she's one of the Vanir and they have the gift of prophecy and foresight. And so she knows like that's, she knows it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so it's an inevitability um, that Ragnarok is going to come to pass and that, you know, the various gods are going to perish like Thor and the Midgard serpent are going to face off and um, a lot of other things. So it would make sense. Like they, they did a really good job with that, with, you know, having mm -hmm. her as one of the Vanir who has foresight profit in the gift of prophecy, basically saying, I know what's going to happen. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. You talked a lot about Vanir and Vanir magic. Vanheim. Yeah. Um, she seemed surprised that Atreus even knew that it existed. Um, yeah, there isn't a ton about Vanaheim. It's mentioned as being like, you know, one of the nine realms. But like in the beginning of time, there was this war between the Aesir and the Vanir. And then the Vanir lost the war. And they kind of mm. became subsumed under the Aesir. And so they're sort of like a lesser class of gods. Um, but they're associated with magic and like say mm -hmm. their magic, which like they Odin learned from um, from them. And um, like, like I said, foresight and prophecy and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, they do a really good job with yeah having, you know, Vanir magic and sort of playing with that a little bit. Um, yeah. Were the there's, Vanir are all female or were they no, male? No. So there's Freya and Freya. Freya oh yeah, brother and, and sister. The twins. Yeah. I mean, the twin thing, like the, you know, that's a typical fertility god type of thing across mythologies. Uh, and mm -hmm. then their dad, Njord. Njothur. Um, and I think that some, like, there's some sources that say Heimdall may have been one of the Vanir, like some sources mm -hmm. seem to indicate that he was, but there's all kinds of stuff about Heimdall that we don't know because it was lost. Like there was evidently a whole poem called Heimdall's Chant um, that just didn't survive. So and for various reasons, and that's how it goes with the sources, right? Like, they could be at the bottom of the ocean. They could be, you know, burned up or something like that, or just discarded in some way. So um, it's probably one of the many myths that were told that were written down that just didn't survive the, you know, 700 years between um, when it was, or the 800 years between when it was written and, um, and now. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. So it's kind of, I mean, I, that that's always one of those things that sort of blows my mind is like, we know, like, what we know is just, like, I, I think I've, I've talked about this before, maybe, but, like, it's, it's, like, you're looking at, like, a puzzle that you've made, but you only have, like, a few pieces of the puzzle, and you're trying mm -hmm. to see the whole picture, but yeah, you can only ever see, like, fractions, like, here and there. It's an incomplete puzzle, and you're, the, the missing pieces are never going to come back in, and, you know, it's mm -hmm. quite a, it's a fraction of what once existed, and so the complete mythology, um, you know, unless there's, it's very unlikely that something's going to turn up at this point. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just for, sort of forever lost to us. But I think that's what makes it really cool is that, and, you know, like for gaming, game developers and filmmakers and TV producers is it gives them a lot of room to sort of imagine what that missing material might have been. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree. It leaves a lot open to interpretation, probably a lot of debate oh. as well. Yeah. And I think like people always wonder why Norse mythology is like something that, you know, is game, you know, gamers and, uh, or game developers, filmmakers, whatever pop culture always turns to for inspiration. And I think that, you know, that flexibility in kind of interpreting those missing pieces might be part of it. I'm not sure. Yeah. It seems like there's a lot of, uh, um, just in, in, in the history of Christianity too, um, so much that maybe they drew from, Norse mythology and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I could be wrong, but um, yeah, much more so of... than, you know, some of the other myths like Greek mythology or something like yeah. that, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, 
I like what they did with the world tree and kind of this idea of interconnectedness, because there is this mm -hmm. real sense in the mythology that the world tree is that all the people living, all the, the, the creatures, the whatever, living beings living in the world tree are dependent on it. Um, but at the same time, like world tree is under constant threat because there's like stags gnawing at its branches and there's the ratatusk, mm -hmm. the squirrel running up and down the trunk and everything. So it's like, it's fragile too. Um, mm -hmm. It was really beautiful how they envisioned it in um, this. What is this? What is this room? The realm. Tears Temple. Okay, Tears Temple, but it's like the room, yeah. like the realm, something, right? Yeah, the realm between realms, I guess, is maybe what you yeah. referred to it as. But uh, okay, yeah, no, I thought that was really cool. Um, and yeah, and Tear is another one that, like, he's an example of one of these gods that, like. There isn't a lot that's known about him. There's indications that maybe at one point in sort of earlier Germanic mythologies that Tyr was kind of the main god. And he's a god mm -hmm. of war and battle, but like he's known to be very just. And at least that's mm -hmm. what we know from like Snorri's Edda and things like that. Um, and in a previous video where I did the q and I, I had some recommendations for, for reading, um, including the two primary sources um, for our understanding of Norse mythology. But um, at some point in sort of the history of Germanic mythology, Odin overtook Tyr in sort of popularity mm -hmm. as the main god. And there's sort of remnants of that in some of Odin's names, which are like hanging Tyr or something like that. They always, they're one of many names he goes by. It's like something Tyr and Tyr is synonymous for God too. Um, but again, he's like mm -hmm. one of these sort of, you know, he has an important role in binding the wolf Fenrir and everything. Um, yeah. He but, seems so much different than... Uh, like Odin or um, you know Loki you know who are maybe more cunning and and yeah you know use deceit you know and trick people into doing things where he was maybe more um, kind you know I mean like yeah. with Fenrir like you know he wasn't that was Fenrir bit off his hand right and, yeah I mean he plays by the rules he's like that deal's yeah. a deal you know I said I'd keep sticking my hand in your mouth if you mm -hmm. know and I'm not gonna trick you here he doesn't trick him he does what he's yeah. to do he's said to be just and um and fair um mm -hmm. so yeah I think that's that's also clever too that they did that um yeah they talk a lot about him traveling throughout the different realms and and um it seemed like he was kind of friend to all you know uh, yeah. with the different races and obviously she referenced how they uh you know the giants and the elves are probably the dwarves everyone helped build tears temple uh you know to facilitate travel between the realms so yeah um that that idea of like balance i think that's something that's also central mm -hmm. to norse mythology and um this sort of this constant cycle of chaos and order um that it's usually like the giants or the the yutnar representing sort of chaos um that mm. um you know and then the aesir and some of their sort of you know the, the other races that they're friendly with trying to keep things orderly and prevent the the, the yutnar from sort of taking over um, but that's the whole mythology is trying to, you know, hold that balance and hold the chaos at bay. So I think that that kind of, they, they hit on that really well too, um, this mm -hmm. idea. And it's clear, like the balance had been disrupted and that's why everything is like messed up and they have like poisonous reavers walking around and all these different yeah. types of these things. So they also referenced with the reavers, like the, the Valkyries and, um, the, um, Einherjar, the chosen slain, the ones that go to Valhalla, I thought that was interesting that like the the hell reavers are the ones that just are sort of like stuck. <laughs> As Valhalla, is that a, a a separate realm or is that part of uh, one of the realms, like a, a specific it's in, area? It's in, it should be in Asgard. It's, so it's Odin's Hall. Oh, okay. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's Odin's Hall, the Hall of the Slain is what it means. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. so when you talk about balance too, a lot of it, especially with with you know how they refer to it in this game it seems like it's mostly the balance and the cycle of life and death right absolutely yeah yeah, yeah and kind of sort of like and not disrupting fate either like this idea mm -hmm. that fate needs mm -hmm. to run its course and um trying to mess with fate's course is, is a no-no generally yeah. Yeah, no, I, this was a really cool one. And I'm glad it was a great suggestion to slow down and listen to the dialogue. And there's a lot of really important dialogue in this one. Definitely. Um, it's interesting sort of knowing like the Loki and Freya relationship in the mythology, um, mm -hmm. that, like she's sort of this helper to them and everything. Um, but I'm curious to know more about like why she's an, why within this, this world, she's an outcast among the gods and why she's been thrown out and all that.
Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I assume yeah, will be absolutely. answered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I, I, if this was really, really cool. Um, I'm trying to think what else there might have been that we were going to come back to. I mean, she used some old Norse words, um, you know, mm. to, to light up the bridge and like um, to sort of. Liosta. Yeah, Liosta. And to, to Breda, to, I think that's what she said. I couldn't, I didn't see the, the text. Oh, with the brambles and the, yeah, exactly. the gondola. Yep. Yeah. To, um, to, to clear that off. So it's fun. It's fun hearing that, um, hearing them use the, the old Norse words mm -hmm. here and there. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, especially now that I'm not in Iceland anymore and not hearing you know, <laughs> these words. Because Icelandic, like modern Icelandic is, you know, relative to other languages that like compared to their medieval counterparts is relatively unchanged in terms of like mm -hmm. vocabulary and grammar. Pronunciation is different. Mm -hmm. um, and there have been some grammatical changes, but, um, you know, it's it's still so close. So oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this was great. So I think um anything else that came up that we wanted to address? I mean, I had some people we can have people do I'll do another QA if people want to. I already had somebody yeah, asking. That's a great idea. Um, yeah, I had already had somebody asking about um kind of how I got into this. And so I can tell you that long winding story of how I ended up in the profession that I'm in um, and answer any other questions of things that might've come up that we may have sort of missed as we were watching. I was really into the dialogue this time. It's like, it's amazing. It's like you're watching a movie, right? Like yep. it's pretty phenomenal. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Yeah, they did a really great job with the, the story. And obviously they took a lot of time and, and put a lot of effort into, yeah, you know, the mythology behind it instead of just yeah. winging it but, i know um, oh, yeah absolutely like i'm really glad we're doing this and um it's really cool to see this through um because they they really did their homework here and they consulted mm -hmm. researchers for you know everything mythology language you know history mm -hmm. um probably people in like material culture with like clothing and weaponry and things like that as well yeah so. yeah for sure yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, well, yeah. If any, if there you need any clarification, just reach out and leave a comment, yeah. and uh, um, yeah. we'll get back into it with the next episode for sure. Yeah. As Natalie mentioned, they should be coming with a little more regularity now that uh, yeah, we're both kind of settling into new schedules. Natalie will be back in in Canada, back home in uh, a couple weeks, and uh, yep, um, yeah, yeah. So we should be oh, on speaking, a yeah, regular another, cadence yeah. with these. Exactly, and you may get um, surprise visits from my puppy. We brought home an Icelandic sheepdog, so he um, he may be making some guest appearances as well. Um, we'll see, but that's kind of a hopefully that's something people will enjoy. You might hear him, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, in any case, yeah, the life has been busy, but um, settling back into routines, and we'll get back to recording. Mike has a lot more gameplay um, done that we can that we can go over. So let us know if you have questions, and um, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Thank you.